Alright, in this video we're going to look at sketching the graph of this rational function 3x squared plus 4 divided by x minus 2. So to do this, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to think about x and y intercepts. Um, so I'll think about x and y intercepts. I'm going to think about um, asymptotes. So vertical, uh, horizontal, slant, or oblique asymptotes. So slant and oblique, same thing. Um, I'll think about that as well. And then I'm also just going to plot some points, just to help me get a little bit of a better graph. So, okay, so the first thing, um, so if we do the x-intercept, or x-intercepts, um, we just take our, our function, and in this case, 3x squared plus 4 over x minus 2, and we set that equal to 0. So again, we could just simply multiply both sides by x minus 2, x minus 2, and then what that will do, well, we'll just be left with 3x squared plus 4 equals 0. All right, so now if we want to solve this, we could subtract 4 from both sides. We would have 3x squared equals negative 4. We could then divide both sides by 3. So we would have x squared equals negative uh, 4 over 3. But then when we take the square root, we're taking the square root of a negative number, which would give us a complex or imaginary number, which is fine, but um, that tells us that there's going to be no x-intercepts for this function. No, no, there's no real number solutions to, uh, to this equation. So that simply tells us, hey, no x-intercepts. All right, so that's no problem. Um, to figure out y-intercepts, or I should say the y-intercept, if there is one, and in this case there certainly is, um, the y-intercept, we simply plug in x equals 0. So if we plug in x equals 0 into our equation, again, we just had a, a second ago, we had 3x squared plus 4 over x minus 2. That was our function. So if we plug in x equals 0, we'll have 3 times 0 squared plus 4 over 0 minus 2. Well, that's going to reduce to just positive 4 over negative 2. And 4 over negative 2 is just going to be negative 2. So it's going to cross the y-axis at the y value of negative 2. So, all right, some useful information. We will come back to that. Let's think about asymptotes now. So again, there's our function, 3x squared plus 4 over x minus 2. Um, I'm going to think about vertical asymptotes. So again, we've seen how to do vertical asymptotes. The idea is we try to factor and cancel out any common factors. Uh, the numerator is going to be a quadratic, again, that doesn't factor. And uh, another way to figure out that it, uh, that it doesn't factor the numerator is, again, if, you, if something factors, if you, so if you take the equation and set it equal to 0, if there's going to be a real number solution for a quadratic, that tells you that, in fact, it does factor. But we just saw that our quadratic equation in the numerator had no real solutions. And that's another way of concluding that it doesn't factor, or it's called irreducible. So the numerator doesn't factor. The denominator is already linear. We'll just leave that alone. There's no common factors. So we've seen that when there's no common factors, we simply... Uh, take the denominator and set it equal to 0. Again, had there been common factors, we would have just canceled out the common factors, and then we would have taken whatever is remaining in the denominator, again, and set it equal to 0. Okay, so long story short, just take the denominator, set it equal to 0 in this case. So if we add 2 to both sides, we'll get x equals 2 as our vertical asymptote. So are there any horizontal asymptotes? Well, Recall horizontal asymptotes only occur if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator or if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Um, and in this case, neither, or in, this, in, this, in this example, uh, neither of those things happen. Okay? So there's no horizontal asymptotes. So is there going to be one of these oblique 
or also known as slant asymptotes. Well, again, we've seen that slant asymptotes occur when the degree of the numerator is one larger than the degree of the denominator. And here, the degree of the numerator is going to be uh, 2. The degree of the denominator is going to be 1. So in this case, yes, there, are, uh, gonna be, there, there is going to be a slant asymptote. So to do this, we'll have to do our long division. So we've got 3x squared. I'm going to fill in. There's 0x's plus 4. And again, we were dividing by x minus 2. All right, so again, quite a few steps here, but uh, uh, again, hopefully no one step is too terrible. So again, everything is written in descending order. Um, so again, I'm just going to look at my x and my 3x squared, and I'm thinking x multiplied by what is going to be 3x squared? Well, I guess we would just need a 3x. Again, we have to distribute 3x times x is going to be 3x squared. 3x times negative 2 is going to be negative 6x. And we subtract everything. So 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0x squared. We'll get 0x minus uh, negative 6x, which is going to be positive 6x. And then we can drop down our positive 4. So same thing. Um, I'm thinking x multiplied by what is 6x? Well, we'll need a positive 6. So 6 times x, again, will just be, well, 6x. 6 times negative 2 will be negative 12. Again, we'll just subtract. 6x minus 6x is going to be 0x. Uh, 4 minus negative 12 will be 4 plus 12, or 16. And again, that's going to be our remainder. So what this tells us is, it says we can take our original equation, 3x squared, plus 4 over x minus 2, and it says we can rewrite that as 3x plus 6 plus the remainder, which we said was 16, and divided by x minus 2. So algebraically, these two equations are exactly the same, totally equivalent. And again, you could verify that by actually getting common denominators on the right side, writing it all back as a single fraction, and hey, you would get this right back. The idea is, though, whatever uh, kind of this linear-looking part, this uh, 3x plus 6, that's going to be our oblique or slant asymptote. All right, so now all we need to do is just start making a graph, putting this information on there, and plotting a few extra points just to get a, a slightly better feel for our graph. So, all right, hopefully I can do a decent little graph here. Okay, so we said there was no x-intercept. Uh, fine. Uh, let's see. We said the, uh, the y-intercept is at negative 2, so negative 1, negative 2. Let's see, we said that our vertical asymptote was at x equals positive 2. All right, so there's that part. And then we said our uh, slant asymptote. Our slant asymptote, again, we said was the line, where'd you go? Uh, 3x plus 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, and again, I'm just going to make this, so there's our slope. Um, I guess where would this cross? Uh, so this is y equals 3x plus 6. I guess this is going to cross over here at negative 1, negative 2. So there's our slant asymptote. Again, I'm not going to put a dot because that's not actually on the graph. So uh, let's see here. I'll probably need to expand my graph here a little bit, but uh, maybe I can fill it in here a little bit further. Let's just add it on We'll keep it going here. All right, so we've got, really, we've only got one single point um, on our graph right now, right? We really only figured out that this, uh, this uh, 
this y-intercept of negative 2. And again, the function itself is not crossing at negative 2. Again, that's just the slant asymptote, okay? So the graph itself is not, so again, there's no x-intercepts. So just to, uh, just to make that clear. So, all right, we might as well just plot a few points now. Um, again, kind of, kind of laborious, but that's how it goes. Okay, so let's pick some x and y values. Uh, maybe I'll use like negative three. Um, let's see, uh, we could always plug in negative two. Um, I'm gonna use negative one. We already figured out what happens at zero. Maybe we'll use positive one. And then also maybe we can use, uh, so at two we said that's our asymptote. So maybe we can at least plug in three and maybe one more, positive four. All right, so let's calculate these hopefully without too much trouble. So f of negative three, let's see if we can't do this. So uh, negative three times negative three is gonna be nine times three will be 27 plus four will be 31. Negative three minus two will be negative five. So what is that? Negative six and I guess one fifth if we make it into a mixed number, right? <clears throat> five will go into 31 six times with one uh, left over. And again, we're dividing by five and let's not forget about the negative. So that's right there, we'll stick that there. And again, let's just calculate the other ones really quickly. So f of negative one, negative one squared is one times three is three plus four will be seven. Um, negative one minus two will be negative three. So that's what, negative two and one third. Let's see, if we plug in positive one, we'll just have three plus uh, four, which will be seven. Uh, one minus two will be negative one. So now we've got negative seven. If we plug in f of positive three, let's see, again, we'll get uh, 27 plus four will be 31 in the numerator. And then we'll have 31, or excuse me, 31. We'll have three, we're plugging three in, right? Three minus two is gonna be positive one. 31 over one does leave us with 31. And then if we plug in positive four, I'm getting a little bit bigger. Uh, so four squared is 16, 16 times three is gonna be 48 plus four is gonna be 52. Four minus two will be two, this will be 26. So again, just trying to speed it up here a little bit, obviously check it with the calculator um, or better yet, do it by hand um, and hopefully, Hopefully we'll agree. So let's see if I can't squeeze this whole little graph in here now. Let's try to make it all happen. So I'm just going to plot a few more points. And then hopefully, you know, I've got enough points to where my graph is correct. So again, maybe not the most lovely graph, right? This should be a straight line, clearly. It's our asymptote. All right, so let's see. Um, so at negative 3... Let's see, we're at, we're gonna be at um, negative six and one-fifth. Um, let's see, if we plugged negative three into the line, we would be at negative nine plus six. We would still be actually at negative three. So negative six and one-fifth is certainly gonna be further down than that. So maybe we can just kinda put it down there roughly again, um, just kind of eyeballing things here. So we said when we plug in negative one, we get uh, negative two and one-third. So we'll be, you know, right around here. Actually, that's kind of bad as well. <laughs> so let's see. Um, at negative one, we're at negative two and one third. We'll be right around there. That's a little bit better. Forget that point. Let's see. When we plug in positive one, we'll be at negative seven. So now we're kind of further down here. So I think I'm starting to see what's happening. It looks like maybe our graph is just going to go... Looks like it's going to go down to negative infinity, which makes sense. And then it's just going to approach this asymptote, this slant asymptote. Um, again, notice it couldn't go to positive infinity because then there would be an x-intercept. And again, there's, there's not an x-intercept. So let's see. At 3, we're already up here at 31. And at 4, we're at 26. So it looks like to me when we uh, start plugging those, those values in, we're going to be kind of up here in this quadrant. So I'm just going to roughly put those on there. So it looks like to me it's going off to positive infinity, sort of to the right of the asymptote. And again, we know that this is our slant asymptote. So the function will get closer and closer to that slant asymptote. 
All right, so to me, that looks like a little rough sketch of this function. Um, again, uh, lots of little things going on here. Uh, put your points in the right place, obviously, right? I almost put my point in the wrong place there, so again, just forget about that one. And then again, it's just kind of a lot of, a lot of little things, just finding vertical asymptotes. You know, obviously doing the long divisions kind of uh, uh, can be kind of long. Um, and, you know, obviously if you have some graph paper, you can make a slightly better graph. But again, for a rough sketch, this would be a rough sketch of our function 3x squared plus 4 over x minus 2.